हेलो फ्रेंड्स मैं डॉक्टर रंजीत सिंह एक बार फिर आपके साथ हूँ एक नया इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक लेकर इस बार मेरा टॉपिक है विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ और उनकी कंपोज की गई पोएम द वर्ल्ड इज टू मच विद अस विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ इज द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट इंग्लिश रोमांटिक पोइट एंड क्रिटिक ऑफ इस टाइम He was born on seventh April, seventeen seventy, at Cokermouth, on the Derwent in Cumberland. Uh, that is now a part of the Lake District in England. His father, John Birdsworth, was a legal representative of James Luther. His mother's name was Anne Coxon. William Birdsworth received his education from Hawkesbury Grammar School. University of Cambridge and then St John's College University of Cambridge he had short love affairs with Mary Stuart then with a french woman Anne de Bellen during the time of french revolution later on in 1802 william wordsworth married mary hutchinson uh, who had been his school fellow at penrith William Wordsworth also received many honors and awards in his life. In 1838, Wordsworth received an honorary doctorate in civil law from the University of Durham. 1839, he was awarded the same honorary degree by the University of Oxford. In 1842, the government awarded him a civil list pension of three hundred pounds a year. Another important achievement of Wordsworth's life, William Wordsworth became the poet laureate in 1843 after the death of Robert Southey and he stayed the poet laureate up to his death in 1850. Actually when he was given this poet laureate seal in 1843, initially he refused this honor saying that he was too old but accepted when the prime minister of England Robert Peel he assured him that we do not expect much from you so finally he accepted and he became the only laureate to write no official verses this was a short introduction of william wordsworth now let's discuss the major events of his life chronologically william wordsworth was the second of five children born to john wordsworth and anne coxon in 1778 Wordsworth's mother Anne Coxon died in the year 1779 Wordsworth was sent to school in Hawkesbury Hawkesbury is a village in England's Lake District in 1787 he was enrolled at St John's College Cambridge University and there he published his first piece of writing that was a sonnet in the European magazine in 1791 he received his bachelor's degree from the Cambridge University in November he traveled to France where he witnessed the middle stages of French revolution he fell in love with a french woman named Annette Vallen in February 1793 he published his first poetry collections an evening walk and descriptive sketches in 1795 wordsworth received a legacy of 900 pounds from raisley calvert and sets up a house in dorset england with his sister dorothy the same year he met samuel taylor coleridge in somerset between 1795 and 1797 he wrote his only play the borderers that was a burst tragedy set during the reign of king henry iii of england in 1797 birdsworth and his sister dorothy moved to alfoxton house Somerset just a few miles away from Collis home in Neath Stowe Wordsworth wrote a poem Peterville as a reply to Collis poem The Ancient Mariner in 1798 Wordsworth and Collis is produced lyrical ballads and lyrical ballads is considered as the manifesto of English romantic criticism it was a collection of 23 ballads in which collar is contributed four poems and wordsworth 19 poems william wordsworth published 
a second edition of lyrical ballads and he added a preface to it in 1800 and the preface dealt with some poetical principles of the poet a third edition came in 1802 and Wordsworth added an appendix in this edition and the last edition of lyrical ballads was released in 1805 in 1799 Wordsworth along with his sister Dorothy Wordsworth moved back to Lake District and settled at Dove Cottage in the village of Grasmere. In 1802, Birdsworth and Dorothy travelled to France so that he could settle the matter with his daughter uh, born to Anna Tevelin and the name of the daughter was Caroline and he made arrangements for the life for, uh, for supporting Caroline there. When he returned to England, Birdsworth married Mary Hutchinson a schoolmate and long-time friend. In 1805, Wordsworth finished his poem to Coleridge, but refused to publish it until he would complete The Recluse. The Recluse was a very ambitious work of Wordsworth, but he could not complete that work in his life. A very long piece uh, and the poem to Coleridge was a prologue to The Recluse. Later on, after the death of Wordsworth, when the poem was published, this poem to Coleridge, it was given the name The Prelude. In 1810, Birdsworth and Coleridge were estranged over the Coleridge's habit of opium addiction. In 1813, he was appointed distributor of stamps for Westmoreland, that was a civil position, and paid him handsomely almost £400 per year. Birdsworth and his family including Dorothy, moved to Riddle Mount and there he spent the rest of his life. In 1814, Birdsworth published The Excursion that was the second part of the recluse, even though he had not completed the first or the third part and he never completed. In 1829, Dorothy Wordsworth comes down with a serious illness that rendered her an invalid until her death in 1855. In 1834, his intimate friend S.T. Coleridge died. In 1843, he was nominated for Poet Laureate of England. On 23rd April 1850, Wordsworth died of pleurisy. Pleurisy is a disease of lungs infection. He was buried in St. Oswald's Church in Grasmere. A few months after his death, his widow, Mary, published his lengthy autobiographical poem to Coleridge, and its name was that time The Prelude when it was published in 1850. These are two important points about Wordsworth. The Prelude is his autobiographical poem and is considered to be his masterpiece. Wordsworth, S.T. Coleridge and Robert Sade they all together came to be known as Lake Poets. These are some important books, essays and lectures on William Wordsworth. William Hazlitt's Lectures on the English Poets published in 1818. Aldous Huxley's Wordsworth in the Tropics in Holy Face and Other Essays published in 1929. And John Stuart Mill's Autobiography 1873. Matthew Arnold's Memorial Verses, 1850. These are the important works written by William Wordsworth. In 1793, an evening book, this poem was addressed to a young lady. 1793, Descriptive Sketches, 1815, Laudamia, 1798, Lines Written Above Tintern Abbey, 1798 Lyrical Ballads, 1806 Intimations of Immortality, 1819 Peterville, 1822 Memorials of a Tour of the Continent, 1888 The Recluse, 1801 Upon Westminster Bridge, 1835 Yellow Revisited. Now let's discuss the poem that is prescribed 
in the syllabus of many universities for the students of graduation. The world is too much with us. The poem is in the form of an Italian sonnet. The world is too much with us by the English romantic poet William Wordsworth was published in 1807 though the poem had been written in 1802. Like most Italian sonnets, this sonnet has 14 lines and is written in iambic pentameter. The sonnet reflects his view that humanity must get in touch with nature to progress spirituality. The rhyme scheme of this sonnet is ABBA, ABBA, CDC, DCD. This Italian or Petrarchan sonnet form has used the last six lines sestet to answer the first eight lines that is octave. The first eight lines octave are, poses a problem and the last six lines sestet gives the solution to that very problem. The poem is based on the poet's actual observation of his life. Here the poet criticizes the gross materialism and spiritual downfall of human beings. Wordsworth's age was the age of industrial revolution. So here Wordsworth is greatly disgusted to see the evil effects of the industrial revolution. Soul killing materialism replaced love of nature. Honesty, sincerity and purity of heart yielded to levity, lust and luxury. This sonnet, The World is Too Much With Us, expresses the poet's feelings about the spiritual decay of the English people in his age. Here, Wordsworth criticizes that the people of his age are busy spending and earning wealth and thus they are wasting the nobler and greater powers and the spiritual powers. They have lost sight of the beauties of nature. They have sold their hearts to the god of wealth that is materialism. They have no feelings left for enjoying the beauties of nature. They do not have any love for the sight of moonlight falling on the surface of the sea or the picture of the winds which make tumultuous noise throughout the day but sleep like flowers at night and not have they any liking for the lovely aspects of nature. As the Christians of his age, they have lost faith in nature. Wordsworth wanted to be nurtured in the outdated creed of paganism, which used to worship nature. As a pagan, he would drive solace from nature worship and have the opportunity of witnessing the sights of pagan gods like Proteus and Triton. The important words that have been referred in the poem you can take down from here. Pagan, Pagan was an outdated Greek religion that considered nature as God. All the people who followed this religion, they worshipped every aspect of nature. Then Proteus. Proteus is a sea god, the son of Neptune. Neptune is considered the ruler of the ocean. He was endowed with the gift of prophecy. Then another Greek god has been referred here as Triton. Triton is the son of Posidian and Amphitrite. He had the power to soothe the restless waves of the sea by blowing the conch shell. William Wordsworth has used a very beautiful figure of speech for sonification in the line the sea that bears her bosom to the moon. The sea has been personified and presented as a human being who has opened her chest and the moon's face is being reflected in the chest of the sea. In the first four lines, Wordsworth, the great poet of nature, was pained to see human beings 
utterly engrossed in worldly pursuits and pleasures. He says the world is too much with us. The people of the modern world have become slaves to luxuries and material pleasures. Hence, here Wordsworth criticizes the very miserable state of human beings. He speaks of the people who are always busy running after the material pleasures and successes of life. They are all time engrossed in hoarding and spending money. Birdsford is very pained to see that men have wasted their spiritual powers in material pursuits. They have completely forgotten nature, which has bestowed innumerable blessings upon them. But wealth has so much enslaved them that they have sold their souls to the god of wealth. In fact, wealth is nothing but a mean and base gift a sordid boon of life, but people do not realize their folly. Hence Wordsworth makes a scathing attack on modern material civilization. People have lost their spiritual powers, their imagination has grown blunt and they have forgotten nature. They have begun to worship the god of wealth and forgotten nature. Their eyes are close to the sight of the sun sounds of the winds and to a number of other beautiful objects of nature. Then Wordsworth says, Great God, I would rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn. Actually, he is so much grieved to see the decaying spiritual life of the people of his age that he heaps a sigh of impatience. He does not want to remain one of those Christians who have forgotten nature. He would rather be a pagan brought up in creed that is now obsolete and keep the close sense of the communion with nature that is possessed by primitive people then be so much taken up with worldly things as the Englishman of his day. The Christians have no eye of appreciation of nature but as a pagan he would at last enjoy beautiful sights of nature. These sights make him feel that he himself is a part and parcel of nature, which is living and not dead. He would find himself in the midst of animated objects of nature, whereas he feels lonely amidst the throng of money hunting people. Nature is a better and ennobling company for him. Moreover, as a pagan, he would have the opportunity of witnessing the heart capturing sight of the sea god Proteus rising from the sea. He would also enjoy hearing the sound of the spiritual trumpet of Triton. Birdsworth means to say that he would like to be a nature-loving pagan rather than a wealth-loving Christian. Hence, here Birdsworth makes use of pagan mythology. Proteus in Greek mythology was a sea god, the son of Neptune, the ruler of ocean. Proteus was known as the prophetic old man of the sea. He had the ability to assume various shapes. Whoever could bind him during his noontime sleep to keep him from changing shape could oblige him to foretell the future. Triton in Greek mythology is a gigantic sea god, part man and part fish. He was the son of Amphitrite and Posidium. He raised rocks from the sea and created islands with his trident and he blew on a trumpet made from a conch cell. This is all about this lecture. Thank you friends.